Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the seven round mock draft for the Jacksonville Jaguars. If you have not seen the last couple videos, what I'm doing right now is I'm piggyback, piggybacking off of the first round mock draft that I did on Monday. There will be a link somewhere over here if I can remember to do such things. Either way, just go back a couple videos. So I, I already did the first two picks for the Jaguars. So if you've seen that, you already know those picks. We'll review that very briefly. Otherwise, we're taking that as well as any and all trades that took place reshuffling and whatnot and moving forward also you'll notice that for the next week so you got the jets last week or yesterday jaguars today etc 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 there's not going to be any dual picks because when i got to here if there's somebody i wanted to pick but the jets already took them i think i can't take them so we're kind of doing like a full seven round mock draft but only for the first five teams it's a weird thing but i kind of enjoy doing it so let's just let's 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 do this with the first pick uh, second overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Justin Fields, quarterback, Ohio State. No disrespect to Gardner Minshew and Mike Lennon, but it's pretty clear that it's time to actually make an investment in rather than trying to find that mediocre quarterback that's going to get us maybe kind of close to the playoffs, but we fall short or we get in and get knocked out immediately. How about we find that genuine elite talent? guy like Justin Fields who's one of the best quarterbacks in college football has been for some time and uh, let's let's make an actual effort at uh, being really really dominant we got close that one time and the quarterback was the issue let's uh, let's go for it and when you got the second overall pick in a stacked quarterback class this does not get any more obvious moving on with the 25th pick in the first round of the 2021 NFL draft the Jacksonville Jaguars I'm, I'm, I'm just picking up from where I left off last time with the Jets. I haven't taken a single breath, so I'm sorry if I botched things up a little bit. With the 25th pick in the first round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select J.C. Horn, cornerback out of South Carolina. Um, one of the worst coverage teams in all of football, as I mentioned in the Monday video. I understand you got guys like C.J. Henderson, who actually got off to a dominant start. He was, he was like an elite cornerback for the first, what, two weeks? That certainly fell off. He's now currently ranked 64th out of 125 corners on PFF. But we did just invest in a corner, so that always makes some people feel uncomfortable. I also understand you have Sidney Jones, but he's also a free agent right now. Not really sure what the plan is moving forward. I suppose why not resign him? He's still relatively young, and he is showing up pretty well, um, which which – I, I, from that standpoint, I can understand the argument. We don't need to do that because C.J. Henderson is going to be great. Sidney Jones is great. We're good. Either way, it's iffy. I don't know about Sidney Jones. He also has a massive injury history. C.J. Henderson has has been pretty terrible um, recently. And everybody else, D.J. Hayden, terrible. Trey Herndon, terrible. Chris uh, Claybrooks is terrible. Josiah Scott for the 30 snaps he took, terrible. Fourth round pick this past year. So, um, uh, Barku horrific and his 83 snaps this year another uh 2020 undrafted free agent guy everybody is horrible so i'm not upset with let's how about we do this how about we keep sydney jones and we draft this guy and we have worst case scenario hopefully is two good corners whether that's cj henderson stepping up or jc horn being a really good corner best case scenario is we have to hear people complaining how unnecessary the pick was because now we have three really good lockdown corners cry me a river with the 34th pick in the second round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Rashawn Slater, offensive tackle, Northwestern. Um, so the quality of play has not really been what you'd like it to be. We got Cam Robinson, we got Jawan Taylor, which Cam Robinson, you kind of was were hoping was going to be a really good player. He hasn't been. He's also up for a contract. Um, after the 2020 season, meaning he's a free agent. I don't know what you do. I mean, do you pay him because he's adequate and you don't want the guy that's behind him because he's much worse? So you, you just pay to at least not get a lot worse? Or do you just let the guy go because he's not very good? I, you know, personally, I think you just got to let him go, cut bait, and, and move on. But that's a, a separate decision. Either way, we need to get better. And so we're going to go with Rashawn Slater. Again, hopefully we get some better production out of Mr. Uh, Jawan Taylor. He hasn't really done all that much so far. But again, either way, we need better players at tackle. It's a critical position, especially after we just picked up Justin Fields. So we are going with Rashawn Slater, offensive tackle out of Northwestern. With the 45th pick, this thing isn't even recording yet. With the 45th pick in the second round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Joseph Asai, edge rusher, Texas. Um, look, I understand the, 
the frustration with we've already taken many swings at this and, and a lot of fan bases and even myself playing fake GM don't really like doing it, but um, we got to get it fixed. We have to be better than what we're doing. And right now we don't have one pass rusher that is even at a 10% pressure rate, which is, you know, that's when I look at pass rushers, pressure rate is, is the most important thing for me. How many times when you're trying to get to the quarterback, do you either get a sack, a hit or a hurry? 10% is the benchmark for me. If you're less than 10%, you suck. Every single person on the Jacksonville Jaguars team as an edge rusher is less than 10%. They all suck right now. We have to get better. And also, on top of that, not only are they not affecting the quarterback, they're all really terrible against the run. And I think that's one area where, at the very least, although I do expect him to be a much better pass rusher, at the very least, I think Asai is going to be a good run defender. Um, and I, although, if that was the only selling point, I wouldn't have drafted him. I, I, again... It's another area of, of concern is stopping the run for this team. I think we're getting two for one. We get our first true top-tier pass rusher. And again, maybe some of these other guys can step up. But at, if nothing else, we get a better pass rusher and we help stop the run a little bit. We need to get better off the edge. And that's what we're going to do with Joseph Asai, edge rusher out of Texas. With the 66th pick in the third round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select... Seth Williams, wide receiver, Auburn. I'm a little interested on what the fan base is going to say. I actually really like DJ Chark and LaVisca Chenault, but I don't know that we really have that true number one dominant player. DJ Chark, maybe you can put in that category. I'm going to take another swing against, especially since we have Justin Fields. I want to really make sure he's stacked and, and set up for success. That's the most important thing. We've got a better offensive tackle. Um, now we're going to add another wide receiver to go along with Chenault and Chark. So we should have a pretty solid, even if he's just mediocre, we've got three decent, you know, low end number one, high end number two type of wide receivers. You can make that work, um, provided that you have an adequate uh, offensive coordinator to make it work. He also fits the mold. He's six foot three, two eleven. Maybe you want to go in a different direction because we've already got the big, powerful wide receivers, but it, it just kind of feels like he's a good fit for what the Jaguars seem to be into. So we're going to go with Seth Williams, um, wide receiver out of Auburn. With the 98th pick in the fourth round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Hunter Long, tight end, Boston College. So again, similar thought process. I'm stacking weapons for Justin Fields, who is just an incredible quarterback. He's super accurate. So if we can just get guys open, he's going to be able to make plays, and you can't stop this offense. Again, we've got at least two. We've added a third big body dominant wide receiver that's just going to absolutely destroy these five foot 11, 198 pound corners. Now we're adding in Hunter Long to not only fill a massive need, as much as there are other bigger needs than tight end on a football field, we don't have a good tight end. Tyler Eifert was a swing and a miss. we got to get better there, and again, it's another weapon. So we've set ourselves up to where there's no excuse for getting this thing going. There's, some other, there's another thing I want to do, but for the most part, at least as far as throwing the ball, we're pretty stacked right now. With the... 121st pick in the fourth round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Deontay Brown, offensive guard, Alabama. I don't think we have the worst guards in the history of the world, and we've got the guys that we have that are relatively locked up, Andrew Norwell and Brandon Linder and whatnot. They're going to be there for a while. AJ Cann's in the final year of his deal, but whatever. Bottom line is, I don't think it's great, um, and I'm kind of shooting for great right now. I would, at the very least in the, what are we, in the fourth round, like to bring in some additional competition. I think we can get a guy that, that starts. I, I want a guy that can play really well and start and be a really solid guard to not only protect our quarterback, but get the run game going a little bit better than it has been. But again, if nothing else, I'd like to bring in some additional competition and depth. We don't have a lot of interior offensive linemen on this team. Not the, the most sexy pick in the world, but um, I just want to fortify our franchise, which is Justin Fields, because if that guy gets humming, if we can bring him in and not break him because he doesn't have an offensive line and he doesn't have any weapons, if we can bring him in and get this thing going, similar to what I said about the Jets, we're quickly turning this thing around. And again, I, I'm not even necessarily shooting for Super Bowl. That's the thing. Like, well, what about this need? So that sucks. Hopefully we can get somebody in free agency or next year. I'm trying to go from second overall pick to there's a chance they can make the playoffs, and then next year, possibly Super Bowl champions. I don't know, but, I mean, give me a couple years to fix this thing. Crying out loud, you bunch of greedy jerks. 
With the 130th pick in the fifth round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Keontae Ingram, running back, Texas. So I do apologize for waiting this long. I promise you I've been trying. That's the other thing. A lot of people are going to look at these mock drafts and say, you're an idiot. You should have taken this and this and that. I'm not going to pick somebody that's 50 picks later just because I want all the positions to be right. You know, we got to do we got to do the checklist. I'm trying to actually do this as though I were the GM of the Jaguars. What would I do? And part of that equation is here are a list of about 10 to 15 guys that are a good value at this pick. What would you like to do? This pick in particular is a little bit of a reach. It's outside of that, but I just can't go any longer without a running back. We don't have anybody. We've got the one guy, our, our what is he, an undrafted free agent, and he's doing a good job. There's nothing wrong with James Robinson, but I'm concerned a little bit about his ability to continue to do what he's doing, um, and I'd like to bring in some additional help. I'd like to bring in some additional depth, and I'd like to keep taking swings to make sure that, again, like we've been talking about, I want to make sure that we actually have a quality running back, um, which is going to lead us into our next pick, which we will do right now. With the 152nd pick in the fifth round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Trey Sermon, running back, Ohio State. So I'm kind of borrowing from the Packers playbook. I'm sure other teams do this, but one of the things that they tend to do is if we don't hit on a need early, we're just going to go back to back, right? They did that with uh, when they did Jamon Moore and Equinemia St. Brown and then um, Marquez Valdez-Scantling. I couldn't think of the one guy that was actually good. They also did it when they did Jamal Williams and Aaron Jones. It was kind of a back to back. We need a running back. We didn't get it early, so we're going back. And they're both actually quite good. So that's kind of my thought process here. And I know a lot of Jaguars fans are saying we already got one. We don't need one. I just I don't trust it, and I'd like to, to try to take another swing at a, a quality running back. And again, this is all about setting up this offense and setting up our quarterback for success. So given what we have with our current running back in Robinson, add in Ingram and Sermon. We've got the running back figured out. We've got a tight end. We've got an improved offensive line. We have an additional wide receiver in Seth Williams. I'm feeling pretty good about it. With the 194th pick in the seventh round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Alim McNeil, defensive tackle, NC State. So we've we've tried to improve the exterior by getting Joseph Asai out of Texas to try to get a better pass rush. This isn't about pass rush. This is about run defense. We've spent most of our time focusing on the offense, but I don't want to completely neglect the defense. And in the seventh round, it's hard to find a lot of things. So I'm looking for something that'll fall and a big old 335 pound defensive tackle. Those guys will fall because in today's NFL, you got to be quick. You got to be agile. You got to be able to do multiple things. I'm just looking for a guy that even the best of the best is probably going to go in the third round if you can't affect the quarterback or whatever. So there's a good chance that this guy just comes in and he does his one job, which is what? Stand there, eat blocks, don't let guys run through you. And he's not going to let anybody do that. It's going to give us a boost to our run defense. It's going to give us a boost on third and shorts, goal line, fourth down, those kinds of situations. And I think I'm good with that. You know, as, as we continue to build, getting us a, a quality piece, and I think Alim McNeil can, can at the very least come in and do that part of his job, I'm good, right? Give me a give me a quality rotational starter in the seventh round all day, any day. Finally, with the 219th pick in the seventh round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Zion Johnson, offensive guard, Boston College. So yes, we're going another guard. Again, it's just about building this thing up. So as I as as I kind of recap this now, we've got what did I get? I picked two guards and a tackle. So our offensive line, we're obviously going to be keeping Jawan Taylor. Um, hopefully it's going to be Jawan Taylor who is improved alongside Rashawn Slater, who's probably going to be the left tackle because hopefully he's going to be a little bit better. We've got Linder at center, who's a very good football player. We've got Deontay Brown and Zion Johnson competing alongside guys like Can and Chatley um, to try to fortify this a little bit better. So hopefully there's a chance. We've got a really solid offensive line here. Um, added in, obviously, Justin Fields, Seth Williams at wide receiver, uh, Hunter Long at tight end, and then the two running backs. So we're looking at LaVisca Chenault. We're looking at um, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, Cole and whoever else at wide receiver all competing for those jobs, along with Hunter Long, who's going to be our new tight end. I mean, I've just, I just I like the offense. I'm not saying it's going to be the number one offense in football, but what it, what it can be at the very least is sort of a team that 
can move effectively down the field and convert third downs, right? It's not maybe going to be the high-flying Chiefs. We don't have that guy that runs a 4-2-5 or, or any of those kinds of things, but you've got the most proficient, accurate, you know, he's got, what, 40 touchdowns and two interceptions kind of thing? I'm, I'm exaggerating, but, I mean, he's sort of an Aaron rodgers -y kind of guy where he's not going to throw a lot of bad passes. He's going to be efficient. He's going to be very frustrating. He's going to get the ball in the right spot at the right time to these big body-wide receivers good offensive line that's going to keep him on his feet you got running backs that are going to be able to pound uh you know down the field we also added in jc horn so when you add in the returning guys hopefully we've got an actual pretty solid cornerback group so you're looking at possibly going from one of the worst pass defenses to maybe not one of the best but top half potentially i don't know um Again, we, we've got guys like Clavon Chase on who hopefully take a step. He's been absolutely horrible. But you add in the guys that we've already taken swings with, in addition to Asai, who we drafted, hopefully we get a little bit better there. We've got a couple pieces along the interior. That's still probably going to be a weak spot, but we did add a Lynn McNeil to the guys that we already have. We've got Jack, who's been real solid at linebacker. He's been kind of inconsistent, and obviously it's been kind of a bumpy ride for him all along, but he's having a fantastic year. If he can continue doing that, you add in the fact that the safeties – Although they could have used a little bit of an improvement, uh, Jared Wilson has been a pretty solid football player for us. So again, it's not perfect, but if you, if you, and I'm, I'm of course I'm looking at best case scenario, these guys are going to be healthy, they're not going to get worse, some of these guys are going to get better, probably isn't going to be the case, but we're setting ourselves up about as good as you can with one draft, not including free agency, to really go from, again, the second overall pick to possibly taking a push at, um, you know, Maybe getting into the playoffs uh, wouldn't be all that crazy. A lot of that's going to come down to coaching and whatnot. But overall, I'm pretty content with it. But make sure you leave a comment uh, in the comment section to let me know what you think about the draft. I will take all of your comments and concerns and whatnot and all the stuff I'm sure I missed. Hey, you forgot about this guy, you dummy. I'll take all that into advisement because I'm going to be doing more drafts. This is not going to be hopefully my last Jaguars draft. So get in your comments. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to never miss another mock draft like the video, et cetera, et cetera. I'll catch you next time.